Today, I'm excited to be with you, and I'm going to share something that Pastor has been emphasizing the past couple of weeks, and he, want, he wants us to talk about it and bring this, this issue to, uh, to importance so that our church uh, will run according to the vision. And this is an issue and a subject of prayer. So I want you to turn with me to Matthew 6, verse 6. And we're going to talk a little bit about prayer. 6-6. Six, six. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father, <clears throat> who sees everything, will reward, will reward you. Prayer. Prayer is necessary in order for God to move. God doesn't do a small or a big thing in our life without prayer. The only thing that God does, he is, he, the only thing he does is, is he answers the prayer of the saints, the prayer of his people. God has already done everything for us. He has given his son, he's given us the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing more above that he can give us besides only answer the prayers that we pray. The prayers that we don't pray are the prayers that will never get answered. Supernatural, it comes on a platform of natural. What I mean by that, supernatural answers come as a result of the thing that we just read, 6-6, six, six, when we naturally submit and we go and do like what God says is to go pray and see God's face. When we do our part, God comes up and he does his part. The problem is many times we don't do our part or we begin to pray and we don't pray it through until we see the answer we give up halfway so in our church we believe in and asking God that God will do supernatural things things like saving people healing people delivering people things like bringing breakthrough in people's lives but those things do not come just on our wishful thinking but they come when church prays and prays fervently. And so therefore, we have Friday night prayers. Everybody, everybody in our church, everybody needs to be there. Everybody needs to pray. It's at 10 p.m. Sa Sunday at 9 p.m., uh, one hour before church, adults pray in one room. Youth and the rest of you, guys, <clears throat> those that speak English, they speak. <clears throat> we pray here in the sanctuary. The prayer needs to become like our bread and water. Jesus said that my house shall be called the house of prayer. He didn't say house of worship, house of preaching, house of the word of God, but he said a house of prayer. There is a reason why Jesus put so much emphasis on prayer. There is a reason why Jesus had modeled a lifestyle of prayer. We read everywhere. He prayed in the morning. He went into the desert place to play. He went to the mountain and prayed. And we read many, 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 many places in the Bible where Jesus was alone praying to the Father. No wonder we see the results that we see in Jesus' life. The results of healing, deliverance, and salvations, and repentance, and breakthrough in people's lives. In Luke 2, 37... Well, starting from verse 25 to 37. I'm just going to read verse 36, 37. It says, And Anna, a prophet, was also there in a the temple. She was a daughter of uh, Phanil from the tribe of Asher. She was very old. Her husband died when, she, uh, when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but she stayed there day and night, worshiping God, fasting, and prayer. This is a story that comes when Jesus came into the temple. I heard something this, this week that I, I didn't think about it. And, and this preacher said that even Jesus himself could not come on earth but through prayer. That it's the prayer of Anna and earlier if you read from verse 25 and down. And the prayers of Simeon that for all these years, imagine she was 84. We assume they, she got married young. And from, they live, she lived together for seven years with her husband and then from that time... <clears throat> She stayed as a widow and every day she prayed and fasted and worshipped in the temple. This paved the way for Jesus to come. Our prayers, 
they paved the way for Jesus to come into our life and to the lives of other people. We just watched the testimony. I mean what a powerful testimony. When God can take such a broken person, such a person that's been hurt and, 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 and broken and shattered into pieces and can restore and can bring life, bring hope and put her in a position of, a, of a, 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 you know, in a place of where she leads other people now into the presence of God. But it didn't start from nowhere. It started with a person, with people in their home group praying for that soul. Praying for 10 days when she was locked up in a mental institution. When she came out, they continued to pray and pray. And until the moment where God really touched her and changed her life. The miracle, the supernatural paved the way. Uh, I mean the prayer, the, the natural things that they were doing paved the way for supernatural, for the miracle to come into her life. So with this, I want to strongly encourage each and one of us. Let's engage in a lifestyle of prayer. In our home groups, let's not be afraid to pray for people. With our home groups, we have the list that we're praying for the people. Maybe it's, it's your relative, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your husband, your wife, maybe it's your kids. Whatever it is, don't give up praying. You say, how long should I pray? You play, pray until you get an answer. That's how long we pray. So in our home groups, our home group leaders, our uh, uh, people that go to our home groups, we have the list of people that we're praying. Let's pray that God will touch them. Prayers work. God answers prayers. And if we pray for people, people will get saved. If we pray for, uh, for people's lives to be changed, they will be changed. If we pray that people will get healed, delivered, and be blessed, they will be blessed. If we pray for people to be saved, they will be saved. Jesus modeled a lifestyle of prayer. If we want to be like Jesus, and this is our ultimate goal as a Christian is to be like Jesus, then we must devote ourselves to prayer. So I encourage each and one of us, let's commit to, a, to prayer. On Sunday morning, don't come at 10, 15, 10, 20 when the worship's halfway through. Come at 9 o'clock, 9, 15 when we start the prayer. Engage in your prayer. Engage in prayer with us. Engage in believing with us that Jesus will come. Prayer paves a way for Jesus to come in the mighty name of Jesus amen do, do, you, do you agree church amen amen amen, amen. so Sunday, uh, Sunday uh, Friday night at uh, 10 a.m. for a Friday night vigil come out and pray with us let's stand in the gap for the city Jesus has said God is looking for people that will stand in the gap and uh, Sunday mornings at 9 and in our home groups and in our personal life when we pray let's remember the names of the people let's pray and we believe that God's gonna bring forth a great, 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 mighty revival in our church and in our city. And if you believe it.